Hello, my name is Ioannis Dizoglu. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a nice and attractive app by using Photoshop and C Sharp. Let's get started. Let's go to Photoshop, File, New. I'm going to create a new project on Photoshop, a new image, by setting the width to 1200, the height to 1000. Make sure the pixels are selected and I'm going to create a couple new layers and hide the background layer. I'm going to use the custom shape tool. From the drop down list here, if you do not see all these icons, click on the gearbox, select all, and then click OK, and then you will be able to see all these icons here. I'm just going to select one of the icons. Uh, let's select that one here and click on the gray area and then click and drag to create a shape i'm going to change the inner color to let's make it green that will do so i'm going to create go to file select save us and i'm going to change the format to png i'm just going to call it my cool app yes i'm going to replace the existing one click ok um, that's done for the image. I'm going to go to File, select New, and select New Project. The new project is going to be C Sharp Project, Windows Form Application, and I'm going to call it My Cool App. Click OK. And my project is created. Now I'm going to increase the size of the window. I'm going to click and drag a panel from the toolbox. I'm going to increase the size of my panel. Right. I'm going to change now the color of my form by selecting my form. I'm going to go to the back color. And I'm going to change the color to the web. I'm just going to call it, okay, I'm going to select the dark gray. I'm going to select my panel and I'm going to change the back color as well to dark gray okay for my panel as well now i'm gonna with the panel selected i'm gonna go to the properties scroll down to background image and select the three dots import and i'm gonna import my cool app dot png click ok and for the background image below instead of tile i'm gonna select stretch Next, I'm going to put, let's put a button. And I'm going to call, I'm going to put a label to the button. So I'm going to select the text section. So instead of button one, I'm just going to call it close. I'm going to go to the font change the font size to let's make it 14 let's make it actually 18 I'm gonna make it bold as well bold equals true and I'm gonna change the background color of my button let's make it uh, no let's make it green different green dark green will do let's put this there and I'm gonna go to my toolbox and select insert a text box and I'm gonna put a label as well my label I'm gonna just put on the text section you like my cool up I'm gonna go to the back color and change the background color to transparent I'm gonna go to the font 
change this font size to let's say 14 use my arrow keys on my keyboard anyway this is the application that I've created if I press play and test it I have this window here so what I'm going to do next I'm going to put all the code necessary so we're not going to have this ugly box around it let's get started I'm going to double click on the close button I'm just going to type close open brackets close brackets semicolon to end my statement so every time somebody cl clicks on the button one the application will close now the next thing we need to do I'm just going to go here uh, within the form one I'm just going to put the code that is needed in order for me to create to create the transparent background so to do this I'm going to type this dot form border form border style equals system dot windows dot forms dot form border style dot none so I don't want any border style and I'm gonna then put the semicolon to my statement whoops now then I will say this dot back color I need to select the back color basically and I will say equals to color again American spelling for the color and then the color I've used is dim gray back color okay dim gray semicolon in my statement and then I will say this dot transparent transparency key equals color dot dim gray semicolon to end my statement okay so these three lines of code what they do is this I'm gonna basically select all the system windows forms okay for the border and I will say I don't want any borders on this form and then I will say this transparent key equals color dim gray now if any color within my form is not dim gray this line of code is going to convert it to dim gray and then I'm going to select I'm going to select I'm going to set the transparency key to basically transparent let's play let's see it as you can see here I don't have the the windows here but I have the background here from the um, panel this is because on my panel I have not actually applied the dim gray so let's go back to here I'm going to select the panel uh, let's select dim gray let's press play let's minimize this as you can see you can see here this is is not dim gray my form window color let's go back to the project I'm going to stop it I'm going to click on my windows form here and I will change the window background color instead of dark gray dim gray because this is what I've put on my code dim gray here if I put dark gray here it will work it will have work right now I'm going to press play I'm going to minimize this window and I've got this window here I can type the information I want and I can apply extra buttons and stuff but the problem I've got here is I cannot click and drag it to place this window somewhere else so if I click close the application closes that's fine so the next code we need to put it will allow users to click and drag the shape and place it wherever they want before we do that one thing that I must do before I forget I'm going to click once on the form and I'm going to scroll down on my properties we're going to find the section which says window state and we're going to set it to maximize so every time the end user double clicks on the application the application will open uh, maximized okay so now we've done this let's go back to the code and just below the initial 
component we are going to type i n i n i t open brackets close brackets and go actually we don't really need semicolon here if you put semicolon it will still work let's put semicolon good practice okay now so we put i n i t and what we're going to do next is we're going to skip a, after the curly bracket here we are going to create let's put some comments here we need to create the first point so the points will be basically points where people click so like here is a point here is a point here is a point so we are going to create a point okay and in order to do this we're going to say private point first point that's my variable equals new point I'm going to open close brackets and we call it my statement and then I will say public void I N I T open brackets close brackets now next what we need to do we need to press the end of key a few times I'm gonna open curly bracket here and close curly bracket and within the curly bracket what I'm gonna do I'm gonna select type move object so my, I have an object I want to move so my move object let's copy that move object will be my actual panel so with the panel selected i'm going to scroll open down until i find the name of the object by default is panel one i'm going to replace the word panel one with move object let's go back to the code now it's going to recognize this right so i'm going to say move object dot mouse down so when the when the end user clicks on the mouse down it's going to add the values so equals greater than and now i'm going to put a curly brackets open and close curly brackets skip couple of lines and then i'm going to put my if statement so if open brackets ee dot button equals equals oops equals equals system dot windows dot forms dot mouse oops let's do that again equals equals system dot oops windows dot forms dot mouse buttons dot left if this value is true Let's open and close curly brackets if this value is true we want the first point to be equals to control dot mouse oops dot mouse position we want to check the position of the mouse no, semicolon that must take one only if this value is true we want to basically locate the position of the mouse now when we've done that let's put semicolon here to end our statement not there sorry there to end our statement and then i'm going to create another argument further down here let's skip a couple of lines so i'm going to select move object dot mouse mouse move this time okay mouse let's put capital m mouse oops mouse move okay and that will say plus equals i'm going to put the location ss e -E. i'm going to say equals greater than now I'm going to open my curly brackets and close the curly brackets and then between the curly brackets I'm going to put my if statement so I will say if ee.button 
equals equals system dot window oops dot windows dot forms dot mouse button oops dot left if this value is true then what I would like to see is let's put skip a couple of lines what I would like to do I would like to create let's put little comments here we are going to create a temporary point okay so the temporary point to create the temporary point we're going to say point dot temp equals control dot mouse position oops that's not control dot mouse position and then I will say point less equals new point and then I'm gonna set the position first point dot x minus temp dot x first point oops dot y minus temp dot y a semicolon my statement here skip couple of lines and now I'm gonna apply a value to the object okay in order to do this I'm gonna say move object dot oops dot location equals new point and then I'm gonna set the point so move object dot location we do basically what we did above x minus res dot x this time and I'm gonna say move object dot location and now we're gonna check the y value so y minus res dot y and semicolon to my statement finally update the first point Let's, uh, oops update the first point this will happen on the fly so first let's be oops first point equals temp uh, that's it let's see yes and we need to put here semicolon okay let's observe our code right so here I've got an issue so move object mouse plus equals and this is not question mark we need to put greater than okay everything seems all right now so here's the code you can pause it you can copy the code okay so basically we're creating a, a, an object which basically it's going to keep checking the point and it's going to keep creating new point for us every time we click with a mouse to the object and the object is the move object and the move object is our basically panel now this variable you can change it to whatever you want to call your actual panel so let's test it I'm going to minimize the project here now if I click and drag we'll be able to click and drag the object to move it around and if I okay and if I'm happy with that and I want or if I want to actually uh, close this project I'm just going to click close okay I hope you've learned something new today I hope you enjoyed this lesson if you really like this uh, tutorial please click on the like uh, button uh, and please subscribe thank you very much